Dearly beloved in Christ, in comparing our human bodies to a tent in today's first reading, St. Paul reminds us how transitory is this life, regardless of status achieved, wealth gained, reputation enjoyed, or work accomplished. All is vanity, Ecclesiastes tells us, and our Lord himself advises us, this too shall pass away. Now, if Bishop Angel were giving this homily, rather than the depressing comments with which I began, he would have already told you two jokes that would have brought tears to your eyes. I always enjoyed hearing his colorful description of the mythological denizens of his titular sea, Setabunichia, although it varied whether they were two or three feet in height and either green or purple in color. His dry yet gentle wit was one of his hallmarks. Always be gracious was his mantra. Kenneth Anthony Angel was born August 3, 1930 in Providence, Rhode Island, and raised in Riverside. He never forgot the Lord was the light of his life and that the priesthood was the reason for which God had created him. He was called to serve him in the dioceses of Providence and Burlington in order to share the living bread that comes to us from heaven. In his statement, on the occasion of his appointment to Burlington, he said, we priests are ordained for the service of the church, and so I go willingly, knowing all the while that this is God's will for me. At that time, Bishop Jeleno, in his own statement, summarized well what Bishop Angel meant for the Diocese of Providence, and I quote, his prayerful demeanor, his sound judgment, his passion for charity and justice, his sympathy for those in special need, and his extraordinary and renowned sense of humor have all led to the profound esteem all the people of the diocese have for him. Indeed, he has reflected to us the image of the Good Shepherd, a true disciple, a loyal apostle, and a faithful collaborator in the ministry of Jesus Christ. Bishop Angel was above all a priest of Jesus Christ who knew from his daily ministry how brief indeed is our earthly sojourn although measured in many decades as was his. As a priest and bishop, whether at St. Mark's Jamestown, Sacred Heart East Providence, St. Mary's Newport, or St. John's Providence, he welcomed into the family of the church the newly baptized, absolved the sins of the penitent, fed the faithful with the bread of life, officiated at weddings, presided at funerals, anointed the ill, and administered confirmation after confirmation after confirmation. He lived his Episcopal motto, serve the Lord with gladness, with the joy that helped lighten the hearts and raise the spirits of all with whom he worked and to whom he ministered. In humility and obedience, he accepted the Holy Father's desire to name him a bishop, although he knew well the demands of the office, having worked so closely with Bishop McVinney and Bishop Gelino. In his homily, on the occasion of his 10th anniversary of Episcopal ordination, Bishop Angel described the sense of apprehension that haunted him until the very moment that Bishop Jeleno imposed hands upon him. He said, the words that came to me were these, once you start to follow after Jesus Christ, 
there is no turning back. He went on to say, the words came to me with such force and with the imposition of the hands came an extraordinary sense of peace. And that inner peace that comes with following Jesus and whatever he has asked me to do has remained. I suspect Bishop Angel would have been content to remain a parish priest, serving the people of God with gladness and joy, but without mitre and crozier. Yet accept the call he did, and for 42 years he worked and lived as a successor of the apostles. Even in the long Gethsemane of his illness and confinement, he served the Lord with trust and faith. Well did he live the lesson of the first reading, namely that while we are in the body, living on this earth, though we may be separated from full communion with the Lord, we are nevertheless doing the work given us in order to please the Lord. So we walk by faith, not by sight. We are called to be courageous in the face of a world that too easily forgets God and too readily rejects the one who is the only way, truth, and life. His own serenity was tested by the death of David, his younger brother by 17 years, and his wife, Lynn, who were on American Flight 11 that was crashed into the North Tower on 9-11. It was the cross he, his sister Claire, and the entire family would continue to carry daily. To be a priest is to be a sign of contradiction. And Bishop Angel did this without rancor or selfishness in the expectation that people could see and love in him what he saw and loved in Christ. There are no doubt many paths he could have walked in this life and successfully, but in faith and docility, he gave his fiat to the Lord of the harvest, and we who knew him and worked with him are the better for it. No priest knows why God has called him, but every priest knows with certitude that God has called him. Bishop Angel not only knew this, he lived this, as he served the Lord with gladness and joy. His path to the priesthood which began in Our Lady of Providence Seminary, ended in a health care facility named Our Lady of Providence. May Mary, the mother of priests, gather into her warm embrace this chosen servant, and may his noble soul know eternal peace. <laughs>